My name's David, and the chronological Bible reading for October 4th is Matthew 3, Mark 1, and Luke 3. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea. The wilderness is an uncultivated, unpopulated place. It's desolate and it's sparse. A wilderness place can be a negative in the sense that it can be spiritually dry. Sometimes when we say that we're in a wilderness season, it's like we're not hearing from God. A wilderness place can also be where we go to get alone with the Father. The same Greek word was used throughout the Gospels to describe where Jesus would go to have a solitary or secluded place. It's where he would go to pray and be free from distraction. John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness because it was outside of the city where the temple and religious stronghold would be. He didn't try to build his ministry at the direct and immediate expense of the established religious order of the day. He likely also began in the wilderness because his ministry was born out of the wilderness where he spent his time being alone with God. When God wants to birth something new, he will require intimacy with the person he's going to use. If God is going to do something through you, he needs to get alone with you first. Many of us want to be used by God. We want to see something new and fresh come out of our own lives. We want to matter. And in order to do that, we have to have a fresh revelation revelation in order to have an anointed ministry, but we need to remember that the new life always comes as a result of intimacy, and intimacy requires privacy. We have to go to the secret place to get alone with God in order for him to reveal to us what he's going to do in these days and how we can be part of it. Jesus and John both had authority when they spoke and the people recognized it because of what God the Father had birthed inside of them. They were not just quoting scriptures they had memorized. They weren't just telling people the things that they had heard from other rabbis. They were sharing the revelation that had been born in their hearts as a result of spending quality time with the Father in the secluded place. We today must develop the spiritual discipline to spend time alone with God so that we can hear his voice. God is doing a new thing in our days. We're in a season of transition and most Christians are simply missing it because they are too busy to stop and listen. If we are Christians, then we are disciples. The word disciple means follower. You simply cannot follow someone if you're unable to see them or unable to hear them. God is calling us today in 2024 and telling us to come out to the secluded place, to get alone with him, to be intimate with him so that he can birth something new in us. John came to pave the way for the Lord Jesus Christ. God the Father said, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare a way for you. A voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way for the Lord. Make his paths straight. The reason John's ministry began with the command to repent was because the people had been worshiping God in ignorance. They didn't know their God, and as a result, they were in a spiritual desert place. We go to the desert place intentionally to get alone with God, or we wind up there unintentionally because we don't get alone with God. John called the people to repentance, and it was only those who received John's baptism who were able to identify Jesus as the Messiah. The people who were humble enough to admit that they had been worshiping God incorrectly or incompletely were the ones who were able to recognize the Messiah. Those who were proud and arrogant, who didn't want to change, who didn't believe they needed to repent and did not understand their need to learn that God was moving in a new way at their time, did not see Jesus for who he was and they were the very same people who went on to crucify him. Luke chapter 7 verse 30 says, Since the Pharisees and experts in the law had not been baptized by John, they rejected the plan of God for themselves. They said, No, we are good. We don't need to change. And we know our scriptures well enough to know that anyone who exalts themselves will be humbled by God. Anyone who humbles himself will be exalted by God. We will be a people who admit our fault who in humility cry out, God, come and help us. 
John begins his ministry as one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Jesus comes to him to be baptized. And when he was, two of the gospel accounts say he saw the heavens open up and the spirit descend on him like a dove. At this point, a voice came from heaven and said, you are my beloved son with you. I am well pleased. Imagine how faith building it would be for you to hear God speak audibly from the sky in front of a multitude of witnesses that you are his beloved son or daughter and that he is well pleased with you. All of our troubles are all a result of forgetting who we are in God's eyes. Jesus perfectly fulfilled the will of God in his life because he never forgot his heavenly identity. There is a reason that immediately after he was baptized and he heard the public affirmation of the father speaking his identity that he is a son that Satan enters the scene and tries to tempt him. The temptation of the enemy is a direct assault on your identity as a son. The same way Satan went to Adam and Eve and planted in their minds doubt as to whether or not they were really made in the image of God, he tempted Jesus and he also tempts us today. Satan said to Eve, God doesn't want you to eat of the fruit of that tree because if you do, God knows you'll become like him. Where Eve messed up was believing that she wasn't already like him. She forgot that she had been made in his image. Adam and Eve had already been given everything they needed for happiness and fellowship with each other and with the Most High God, but they forgot who they were. Jesus came as the second Adam, and he knew who he was, and that's why he was able to live a perfect life and be a sacrificial lamb to ransom us back to the Most High God. All of your problems are because of the fact that you've forgotten who you are. Know and understand that you are a son or a daughter of the Most High God. And as you do that, may God increase your faith in this area. He has placed within all of us a desire to change the world for his glory. And we will do that as we focus on and live from a place of our identity in him. May he make this revelation come alive in your spirit and may he bless you as you live according to your identity in him. Thank you for being on this journey with me through the word of God in 2024. We'll see you tomorrow.